What's up, everybody? It's Minister KJ here, and I want to welcome you to another e-worship experience. We are so grateful that you chose to connect with us on today. Now, here's what we need you to do. One, if this is your first time worshiping with us, go ahead and drop the word connect in the comment box so that we can know you're visiting and connecting with us on this morning. Go ahead right now, drop the word connect in the comment box below so that we can connect with you. And two, we need everyone that's joining us this morning to go ahead and get social. That means like the video, share the video. And if you're watching us on YouTube, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the bell to receive alerts on every time we are live. We're almost to a thousand. We just need your help to spread the word to check Elm Grove Baptist Church on YouTube. Now, once again, we have a special service for you that we know will be a blessing to you. Now, before we get in, let's check out some praise and worship with some best of praise and worship moments. Oh, 
full of glory, full of mercy and grace. And now, church family, it is time to give back to the Lord a portion of that with which we have been blessed. It is time for the offering. We know that the Lord loveth a cheerful giver, and we want to take this time to thank you for being faithful to the giving experience. We want you to know that we are being responsible stewards of those gifts with which you have blessed this ministry. We are doing work out into all the world as we have been commanded to do and we can only do that because of you and so we thank you for taking this time now look give by whatever means is most comfortable for you follow the prompts on the screen and we pray God's best and choices blessings upon you Good morning, everyone. Again, I'm Minister KJ, and we want to welcome you to this special edition of this worship experience. We're going to go ahead and get into this conversation, and we want to welcome our pastors, Pastor Errol and Angela Domain. What's up, y'all? Hey, what's up? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How was Thanksgiving for you two? Oh, wonderful. Yeah, it was good. I love being good. with family. We kept it small. Um, okay. and intimate. So just just a very, very few of us that, you know, that little social bubble that right, we've right. been in since February. Of course, of course. <laughs> and uh, I, I enjoyed being with family. It was really good. Yeah. Good. So, you know, I like to have a little fun, right, with, with the both of you. Of so, course. Oh, <laughs> here we go. 
Here we go. Here we go. So I have three questions. All right. Three rapid right. fire questions. All right. Okay. About Thanksgiving. All right. Y'all ready? Yes. Man. All right. So number one, and Dr. A, we'll start with you. What's your all time favorite Thanksgiving dish? Cram uh Cornbread dressing. <laughs> Cornbread dressing. Okay, okay. Any any particular reason? Any special reason? Okay, well, see, I like cranberry sauce, I do. Uh -huh. But okay, the okay, cornbread okay. dressing is really because he makes a mean cornbread dressing. Oh. See, y'all don't know that. She's trying to he blow my mind. That's what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> he makes a mean cornbread dressing. It's a two-day event. And I'm wow. telling you, you have never had cornbread dressing like this. I'm telling you, he can work it out. He can work it out. <laughs> Some people okay. jealous out there. She's just trying to yes. score points. Yeah, go ahead. Hey. Points, points, okay. <laughs> <laughs> would, you, would you say that's your favorite or do you have another favorite? Definitely the cornbread dressing. It is an event, right? Yes, so it I'm, is. I'm in the kitchen. Everything is coming from scratch. Everything is on the counter. I'm calling my grandmother. The kitchen looks like a bomb went off in there. <laughs> I, I'm putting a little something in there that, that other people don't know is in there. It's definitely the cornbread dressing. It's the cornbread dressing. Okay, dress. okay. All right, number two. Number two. Which yes. one dish we can just cancel from Thanksgiving that you never have to have again? I never have to have carrot souffle again. Okay. Never have to have it. All right. No. Nope. And even though it's one of her favorites, I, I don't ever have to deal with cranberry sauce. <laughs> ever, 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 ever. ever. All right, I'm with you on that one. I'm with you on that one. All right. Last question, last rapid fire question about Thanksgiving. What's your favorite after dinner activity on Thanksgiving Day? Sleep. Yeah. I'm tired. Yes. After cooking, after all of that cooking, I am tired. I like to sleep. I agree with the sleep. You know, the melatonin kicks in. And I let football games watch me for most of the day after that. <laughs> okay. And, uh, so, Pastor, we heard your favorite, well, your top dish, right? What's your top dish that you like from Dr. A? Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, let's see. Definitely let's the see. greens. It's oh. the greens, man. <laughs> okay, the greens, the greens. All yes. Right. Okay. I just had to level the, the, uh, the playing field. Right All right. Get you some points. Get you some points. There you go. Right. Help, help a brother out. <laughs> All right. All right. So let's let's dig a little bit deeper. Um, and for those that are joining us, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, Service is looking a bit different today, um, but we promise you it's going to be a blessing to you. So stay tuned. Go ahead and share yeah, this video anywhere. with someone. Don't do not click that X. All right. Share this with someone. Start a good watch party for us. All right. So this question is for the both of you. Um, so um, ever since March, right, we have been in the virtual church world, right? We've been doing ministry a whole different way, yes. filled with good, bad ups and downs in mm -hmm. a lot of lessons, right? Yes. So from the both of you, I'm curious to know how has ministry been for the both of you, but how are you keeping the word, conveying the word relevant and practical, being that you're not looking at anyone or you're not able to touch the people huh. as you would? Uh, I guess we should start by saying that when March hit, uh, we were blessed that we were already moving in a direction that we were improving our virtual imprint. We had already brought Damien Hurd in and formed a team. And so we were already kind of moving in that direction. Uh, and so we were blessed in that sense, but we still had a lot of ups and downs, ebbs and flows, mm. bumps <laughs> that we had to go through a lot of learning experiences. Uh, how has it been different? Uh, the biggest thing is uh, trying to to be encouraged such that we can encourage people uh, in a time that, that really plays yes. on your nerves and your emotions a lot. So for me, that's, that's one of the biggest challenges. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, the way that we minister in, in general ha has changed. So even, even if I limit that just to the preaching moment, um, the preaching moment is, a, is about the, the response, the call and the response between the speaker and, uh, and the congregation. 
and there is not that call and response. Mm -hmm. The spirit moves in the call yeah. and the response. Yeah. I mean, a good teacher knows whether or not, you know, you're reaching your, 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 your students in the call and response. And so not having that has been a great challenge to me. Um, another great challenge um, for, for both of us, I know, has been, again, the way that we minister. Um, in the church, we come together, we fellowship, right. we hold hands to pray, we hug when we greet, we cry with one another, uh, we hang on to each other, and, and this is physical touch. So while we know the church is not limited to our, our physical gathering, it is a big part of what we do. And so even now, to comfort those who mourn, that looks different now yes, than it did yes. prior to, to uh, March. And to share the joys and, and, and all of that, all of that looks different. So it, it has been um, a challenge trying to, I guess, convey and maintain the emotional connection um, that also goes with the spiritual instruction and spiritual support. Definitely. I'd like to also add or continue with what Doc was saying is that, uh, you know, what I've noticed is that that sickness and death has not stopped even during the pandemic. And especially with the part about celebrating home goings, we can't do it the way we used to. We can't grieve properly according to our customs and our traditions. And so that has to be one of the most difficult parts uh, to, to try to minister to people who are used to grieving one way, right. and yet it's our job to say, well, you can't do this because of the pandemic and we can't come together. And so that is really difficult to, to almost feel like you're adding to the pain, uh, but you know you're doing what's best right. for your people. The second thing I would say uh, is communicating uh, prophetically what I would say is the next, is next move of God in the church coming out of pandemic, right? Because church is not going to be the same. And so, uh, and we've been trying to teach that Sunday morning may not be the focus. There may not be packed houses as, as we are used to now. So we have to concentrate on real ministry and real fellowship that does not meet at worship time on a Sunday. Uh, but it's a great opportunity in that God is now allowing us and showing us how to be the church rather than just coming that's to right. church on Sunday and Wednesday that's night. Right. So that's, right. uh, that's, that's just a touch such. of the adjustments that we've had to make. Yes, yes. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, we were talking the other week about how we are able to, we are able to reach so many people that would have never connected with us with this virtual world. So um, I'd I, I love to see all of the the new faces that we are able to reach and the people that are connecting with us. Can you touch on that, either one of you? Well, uh, one of the blessings to me is, especially when I'm ministering on Wednesday nights, uh, or when we are ministering on Wednesday nights, is to see an old classmate or an old friend to pop up in the chat box. Uh, that's a real blessing to me, uh, to be able to make that kind of connection. And as you said, uh, that we're touching, we're touching people, people that probably, probably would have never set foot in church, church on Sunday, Sunday for whatever right. reason, but they find it convenient and, and find it worth their time to, uh, to click that button and sit right. there for an hour with us on Sunday morning. So that's a real blessing as well. Right, and I'm, I am blessed by all of the, the people that we would not otherwise have had the opportunity to meet. Not, not just those who are, you know, quote unquote, unchurched, but mm -hmm. those who mm -hmm. don't live within our proximity. The, all of the out of state people, yes, indeed. you know, that we hear from and say, wow, you know, glad to have come across you. Um, you've been a blessing. Yes. I enjoy your ministry. That has been uh, a blessing to definitely, me as well. Definitely. Uh, and, and, and this idea of getting the message that God has given to us out, right? Yes. So it's, it's a trip when, uh, when, when Brother Damien brings uh, some of his assistants in and they say, oh, y'all talk about black people at this church. You know, that's a real blessing to us. And also uh, to get the cards and the letters, oh, yes. right, from we people who are not part of our faith communities right. yes. 
yeah, as of yet. Right. And just, you know, to encourage and to, to say, yes. hey, we really enjoy the work that you guys are doing. That's, yes. that's a real blessing as well. Okay, Pastor, this question is for you. How is it being able to do ministry with Dr. A more than you would have been given the opportunity earlier in the year? How is it working closer together? This, this is, is the, the pinnacle, pinnacle, right? <laughs> this, this is top, the top of the line for me uh, as it relates to, to ministry. I've always thought that we, should, uh, that we should minister together in this period. And I know that she's, you know, sooner than later, this is going to be over and we got to kind of get back to doing what God has called us to do. But for right now, I'm, I am enjoying this immensely. I, I can't even put it in words. Uh, how wonderful this has been for me. Dr. A, you want to add anything? How has it been working with him closer? Oh, it's, it's been absolutely wonderful. Um, we have um, often wondered how, you know, this could be, how, how could we come together and, and whether would, the Lord would allow us to come together and and it seems like the Lord made us right, right. come together yeah. and, and minister together. And um, we, we are just enjoying this. I know that I am. I learn uh, a lot from him. I know that um, we have, we as, as the New Canaan Church, we have definitely been blessed um, to be able to have this opportunity to come together as church families. But um, Personally, it has just been, you know, beyond what I know what I ever imagined it, it could be. Yeah, but baby, you guys need to put this in the lower thirds uh, for okay. us that we are not trying to start one church, right? <laughs> God has not told us to bring it because <laughs> I, I could see the wheels turning, right? <laughs> That's not it at all. <laughs> Let's keep it moving. So, um, I believe in April, the two of you did a series called um, When God Speaks Through the Arts. I mean, uh, over the, the, yeah. the past months that we've been together um, more, um, both of you tackled the same series on a monthly basis. I know that's different for the two of you. Mm -hmm. How do y'all come up with the series for the month? Walk us through that process. So y'all just walking around the house and yelling, hey, do this or... <laughs> You're driving and calling each other, hey, I have an idea. How, how does that go? You know, sometimes that happens. Well, yes, indeed. <laughs> sometimes that happens. Yeah. And I think that's, that's organic of, of mm, what we do because we, we, um, we live what we preach. We preach what we live. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and so it is. It, it, a, a sermon or sermon series may emanate from... Um, a news story mm -hmm. or or some some socio-political theme of the day yes. um, or having quiet time and and I'll tell you that's how the worshiping God through the art series came about for us because we never have time to sit back and enjoy God in nature mm. and to hear him move through the wind and to see his hand in the clouds and and to see, you know, I, I told the pastor when we were on uh, lockdown, as everybody, when we were in phase one, you know, the, the grass seems thicker and then stands up taller and the stars are shining brighter and, and, and all of that. And so having those moments to sit and appreciate God for who he is and how he works in that time. And so again, just from living, just just from being and mm -hmm. being present, um, and appreciating God's presence all around us at yes. all times, that's how sermon series and sermons come about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's stay on that for a while. Um, okay. So when we look at the series, when God speaks through the arts, um, and we all know, I think everyone that's watching this knows Pastor Domain loves hip hop music, right? Um, and then we speak about the art and we speak about dancing and we speak of um, murals and, um, and all the different types of art, right? How 
using those those metaphors and those those outlets right as music how is that how how does that help um, convey the message or the sermon to all generations well um through through the arts came about as a way to um, help people to remember that God is absolutely everywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and you can, you should look for him in everything. Look for his, his hand, his handiwork in everything. And so yeah. at that time, you know, again, enjoying the music of nature, we thought about, ah, how about the arts in general? I think we started with music specifically. Yeah. And then that idea, as we talked about it, expanded. Well, what about right. in all of the arts? Exactly. Um, and, and it took work and it took study, as all sermons do. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd say, you know, with, with this series, I you know, had to use the other side of my brain. <laughs> You said that too. you said that while we were preparing to have to use the other side of my brain with this. Yeah. <laughs> right. It, it, it just reminds me of a story that that you guys have heard me tell uh, a few times by now that when the so-called missionaries came to the natives uh, in, in what Maya Angelou calls these yet to be United States, um, the missionary offered the Bible to the native, right? Thinking this is a heathen and uh, I, had, I have to, in our language, get him saved. And the native uh, person said to the missionary, your God is so small, you can fit him in a book. We see God everywhere. Yes. So that's kind of what this series reminds us of. Mm -hmm. Okay. So while we're right there, we're, let's look at the first part of this series. Let's check out this clip. Sermonic offering this morning is God Speaks Through the Arts you can call this part one, and the subtitle is The Break or The Break Beat. The Break or The Break Beat. In the early 1970s, or the mid through the mid-1970s, uh, in the Bronx, New York, there was a time when the city, New York City, was on the verge of bankruptcy. It was a time when the Bronx were literally burning because slumlords were burning down buildings so that they didn't have to take care of the tenants who lived in the buildings. It was during a time when the summer heat was swelling, but it was also a time when in the neighborhood, in the Bronx, New York, uh, that young DJs were hosting parties, hosting parties on the block or hosting parties in rec centers to give a release from all of the troubles, all of the unemployment, all of the, of the hardship and difficulties of that day. They would throw parties uh, uh, all during the week and people would come out of their houses to enjoy the music and to dance alone. It was during this time that a young DJ recognized that there was a moment in just about every recording or every record when uh, the crowd seemed to get, to use our term, a little more hype. It was a time uh, in the record when they, they noticed more enthusiasm and more activity. It was the time when the song was stripped down just to the rhythm section and every Everybody seemed to dance uh, a little harder. And so this young DJ recognized uh, what was going on and tried his best to play that particular part of uh, the music of the record over and over again to the place where he decided to get two uh, two turntables and duplicate copies of the record and began to loop that particular section to make one long rhythm song so that the people could release themselves, uh, could release themselves from the difficulties, at least in the moment of uh, the break or the break beat. Now, I know some are tripping and wondering, what in the world does this have to do with scriptures? Take this journey with me, and I think that we can come to some conclusion that every now and then, God will present the break or the break beat for us, and it is up to us, according to Ephesians chapter 5, uh, verse 16, to redeem uh, the time. Let's take this journey together. It was, uh, if you will, 
Uh, a supreme use of uh, imagination. Somebody say imagination. Imagination, I know you're tripping. I'm not talking about hallucination and I'm not talking about fantasy. I'm talking about the divinely inspired and divinely anointed imagination that only he can give to us. This is, uh, this is about what we see and what we communicate or express about what we see. You see, when we talk about imagination, it is... Uh, of the forming of a new image uh, that may not be visible to the natural eye in the right now, but God shows us the possibility of what can be. It is about still maintaining the nerve to communicate what God has shown us uh, of either of a present moment or a moment that is to come. Believe me, we know about imagination because it takes imagination to live as an American citizen whose skin has been kissed by the African sun such that you can see yourself treated as something other than chattel. It takes imagination to see yourself owning rather than just working for or renting a piece of property. It takes imagination to see yourself thriving and not just getting by or surviving. It takes imagination to see God turning your trauma into triumph. We know imagination. We know that God will show us, but can I tell you that the power is not just in what you see, but the power is in how you communicate what you see. It's in the language. See, the language of imagination, according to Walter Brueggemann, is newness. Somebody say that with me newness. It is the sphere of operation for those who see what is, uh, but have the audacity to see and to speak about that which is beyond the ordinary, ordinary and the reasonable. I need to say that for you again. It is, uh, it is the power of those who can see what is, uh, but have the audacity to see and to speak about that which is beyond the ordinary and the reasonable. See, we can't afford to wait for somebody else to do for us what we need to do for ourselves. So-called allies are good in their place, but they will never absolve us from our responsibility to ourselves and to one another. Remember that man that Jesus encountered by the pool of Bethesda in John chapter 5? If we don't watch it, we will we will have the same attitude that he had. Jesus asked, do you want to be healed? He said, I don't have anybody to help me. We will find ourselves in like manner, always waiting, always on the outside looking in. If we don't take responsibility for who we are and whose we are, if we don't try to build for ourselves, if we don't invest in ourselves and if we don't care for ourselves. Brothers, do you hear me? Here's what I notice that that sometimes here, here here's what happened. It the recording uh, uh, the song was already recorded. Uh, it was already a part of the lexicon the lexicon of life. But what the DJ discovered is it, there's a moment within the recording that seems to bring out more enthusiasm. He did not create another beat. He used what was already there in an innovative way to make it more exciting. Can I tell you that not only must you be able, must you be willing to take control of the situation to touch what other people refuse to touch, but baby, sometimes you've got to be willing to be innovative not to create something new, but to use what is already there. Dr. Domain keeps trying to teach me that part of the problem with us is that every generation thinks it needs to create, but when the work has already been done, when the metaphorical will is already there. Don't recreate, baby. Just be innovative with what is already there. I got to go. I got to go because I don't want to shout this morning. But here's the next one. And maybe you'll get this one. 
you got to be willing to take simple elements. All the street DJ had with no, with not a lot of money, without a lot of resources, with two turntables, duplicate copies of records, records, a mixer, and some speakers, but was able to turn the party out. So I'm trying to tell you, baby, you don't need the latest and the greatest. You don't have to have everything that the commercials on the internet and the television tells you that you need to have. You can use simple elements. You can use what God has already put in your employ and you can turn this world upside down. Here's the story in case you haven't recognized it. I'm talking about the birth of hip hop with cool DJ Herc who noticed the break beat. I'm talking about Grandmaster Flash. You know, Grandmaster Flash of Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five don't push me. Grandmaster Flash took what DJ Herc heard uh, uh, and did uh, and added, added science to it such that he was able to loop the beat rather than picking up the needle over and over again. I'm talking about how Grandmaster Flash's mentee, uh, Grand Wizard Theodore, heard what Herc did and heard what Flash did and he learned how to spin it backwards to give us the ch -ch 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 scratch on which hip hop was built. And from that, we got B-boys dancing. From that, they connected with the graffiti artists who were expressing themselves in art on the subway trains. And the next thing you know, somebody recorded a record, you know, a record, uh, uh, a record by the Sugar Hill Gang. And then the next thing you know, someone else records a record. Next thing you know, somebody starts wearing the clothes. Somebody started wearing a, a, a starts wearing Adidas like Run DMC. Next thing you know, somebody's wearing black Levi's and a black Levi jacket. Next thing you know, somebody else is adding a, a adding computer synthesized sounds to the record. Next thing you know. Fast forward, now we have a billion dollar industry because somebody heard God talk in the break beat. God is still speaking. Are you listening? Um, so that was part one of the series when God speaks through the arts, right? Speaking through the beat, right? Or the break beat, as you said. Uh -huh. And Pastor, you spoke a lot about imagination um, and you referred to imagination as the forming of a new image that may not be visible to the natural eye, but God shows us the possibility of what can be. And then you went on to say, it's the power, the power is not in what you just see, but how you communicate what you see. Can you, can you dig into that a little bit? Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. In, the In the church, church we, call we call that, that vision. vision right? <laughs> <laughs> is that uh, people can see, like people will see trash and God will show you the possibilities of what can be made with that trash. Think about the image that, that I used to begin the sermon, right? The Bronx were literally on fire when hip hop was created. And yet these young, young uh, people uh, not only saw the power of of using their skills as DJs with one uh, with one turntable, but but then they noticed something happened, and they they imagined how they could lift the people's spirit by using uh, two turntables and taking advantage of what they call the breakbeat. Okay, Doctor A, would you say a clear mind is needed in order to have imagination and to be able to see the things that don't exist? Absolutely. Absolutely. You, you okay. have to have, have a space, space um, in, in your, your thoughts. thoughts. You, you, you have, have to create, create time to, to remove, remove the distractions, the distractions. Um, mm -hmm. and, and hear yes. um, what, 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 what God, God is speaking, speaking. The, the, the imagination. imagination. Um, yeah. To me, that's, 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 that's the, the spirit, spirit providing, providing inspiration, inspiration to, to do, do something, something that yeah, you, you you would, would not, not have, have considered, considered before. before. Um, it's, it's that, that moment, moment of clarity that, that will resolve, resolve a problem, problem that, that you've been, been wrestling, wrestling with, with, that, that will provide peace with um, some, something, something with which you've been, been troubled. troubled. It's, it's, it's that, that moment, moment of breakthrough, breakthrough really. And, and yes, yes 
you have to deliberately and intentionally create time and space for that to happen. Okay. And I want to keep going with that. Um, so with everything that's going on, right, we're dealing with going back into phase two. Um, that means some of us won't be going into work again. More places are closing. We're going to be spending more time at home again, probably real soon. Yeah. How do we get in a, a space or how do we clear our minds to be able to hear from God what he's trying to show us? Uh, I always say, I say you got to make, make God, God a priority. A priority. Uh, in your life. Well, that, relationship that relationship has, has, has got, got to have priority in your life. life. And, and so, so for, for for us at home, that, that means sometimes um, disconnecting, disconnecting from, from the world. world. So, so there is a time when we are not, not watching, watching television, television when, when, when the electronics, electronics get put away, away. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. when, when we focus, focus on one another's, another's needs. needs. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't mean, mean that, that you, you, you got to have, have a closet. closet. I, know I know that that, that was, was, you know, popular speak, speak years, years ago. Go, I, I, I have my closet. I go in my closet and I don't have anything in my closet, but my Bible and a chair. Well, my life doesn't work like that. Maybe that works for you. And that's, and that's fine if it does. But um, to me, it is disconnecting from the world, focusing on the blessings that God, God has given, given to me. me. Instead, Instead of, of griping, griping about being at home, I'm, I'm happy, happy to be at home. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm happy, happy to have uh, a family, family to share this time with that yeah, in, 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 you know, a very, very real sense, sense in everyday life, life, I would not otherwise have yeah, because I'm doing something for somebody else. I'm doing something for a boss or for a job or for whatever. Be grateful for this time and, um, Take, take time, time to, to listen, listen to, one to one another. another. Take, take time, time to, to, to uh, focus, focus and play and with one, one another. another. <laughs> and uh, that, that, will, that will, will bring peace. If, if, if everybody, everybody comes, comes into an agreement, agreement about, about this, this is, is our time, time then, then that, that can, can be a time, time that you hear, that, that, you, that you receive. receive. And then and another great time, I know for me, is late in the midnight hour. When everybody else is asleep, Definitely. Um, sometimes I'll, I'll lie in bed and think or pray or read. Sometimes I get up and walk around the house and just look at my blessing. I'm inside and I'm not outside. You know, I have a bed. Yeah, I have, I have night clothes and I have day clothes. That's a blessing. And uh, doing those things bring peace, peace and, uh, and allow, allow me to, to hear, hear uh, from God, mm -hmm. allow me to be inspired. Yeah. yeah. Great. Yeah. Pastor, you want to add anything? Oh, you know, you know I'm, I'm fond, fond of, of saying, saying and, it and it comes from, from deep, deep within, within me that, that nothing, nothing beats spending, spending time, time with God. God. So, so like, like Dr. Dr. said, you know, you have to make that a priority. And I try to teach our ministers and teach teach disciples in general you know, you know that you have, have to set, set that time that, that it's every day, day right? And don't, don't knock on this door, door don't disturb me unless the house is literally burning down. down. Don't stop me because a mosquito got in the house. Uh, so because, because this, this is my time with God. With God. Um, I'm also uh, just kind of also reminded uh, of, of something that happened just this week. Uh, they couldn't find me in the house. And, and so, it was like, where is dad? Where is the, you know, and, and babe, where are you? And I, I was in a quiet space in the room, uh, just taking a few moments with God, trying to hear. Uh, we had some decisions to make. I was trying to hear what God has to say about it. And so, you know, that's kind of the way it works. The last thing I want to say with that is to challenge the disciples, the sisters and brothers to, uh, to do what, what uh, my, one of my preaching heroes says, dare to imagine what God imagines. Mm. That should stretch us. Yeah. Yes. I like that. Okay. Dr. A, let's dig into part two, when God speaks through the arts. Let's check out this clip. This, this sister created art that speaks to everyday life and I posit that we can see God speaking through her art. 
The particular piece that, that we are talking about this morning is one that is from a series of 15 that she created, and the series is entitled The Negro Woman. Uh, she later renamed that same series to The Black Woman, and the series speaks. First of all, it speaks in and how it is formed, how the piece of artwork itself is created, it speaks. Um, hear me clearly. The granddaughter of slaves in creating a representation of the Negro woman or the black woman used linoleum, which had a specific use for one thing, but then she used it and created something unique entirely by using that thing for something else. It, it had one use. Somebody created it and manufactured it with, with one use in mind. But the granddaughter of slaves, in, in, in her creativity and in her need for self-expression, this artist had something within her that said, I have another use for this, and created art. Hmm. Somebody ought to be able to relate to this. How, how many mamas and big mamas took something that was nothing and made it into something and then made that something special? Somebody can recall hearing about Big Mama taking the leftovers from Miss Mary's dinner. And, and perhaps they hadn't finished eating the chicken, but Big Mama took that, took that chicken home and we had stewed chicken one day and we had chicken salad the next day and we might have had chicken soup the day after that. Mama knew how to work something from nothing. That's how we have been taught. Coming up in our culture, we, we know how to take that which we have and, and to extend it and expand it and to make it uh, more than just that original use. If you look at it, I want you to, to pay attention to, to the lines. Pay attention to how Sister Catlett used the lines in the painting. The, the lines appear to flow in a clockwise manner. It, it makes our eyes move along in a clockwise direction. In fact, if you look at the 12 o'clock position, it, it is the woman's head. Her head is there, center of the picture. Her head is bowed. Her forehead is furrowed. Her eyes seem to bear the weight of whatever is on her mind with their half-closed lids. Even her cheeks seem sunken but by the way that the, the artist has darkened the lines along that right cheek. Overall, the impression is she seems to be in deep contemplative thought or reminiscing about something that evokes pain and stress in her heart. Somebody would say, yeah, I, I understand that look because, you know, I got to thank God every day that I, I just don't look like what I've been through. I, I understand having to carry on even when everything on the inside of me wants to give up and scream. I, 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 I get tired trying to figure out how to maintain my sanity in a world that seems to have gone crazy. I understand that look. I tell you, this piece speaks. Oh, uh, Dr. E, I have to give you a huge standing ovation for the way you broke down that one piece of art. <laughs> I think everyone really enjoyed how you really broke it down. Um, so awesome job on that, Dr. E. Oh, well, yes, thank indeed. you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> can, you, can you talk about, uh, like, how did you, why did you pick and how did you pick that piece of art to use in this, this part of the series? I, I actually uh, came across this piece of art first and um, just started, you know, as, as art does for me, paintings, drawings, and, and so forth. Um, 
what what do I see? You know, what what am I looking at? It begins with with questions for me. It attracted me, and and I didn't know why. And um, as I began to look at how the artist conveyed the image onto the 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 uh, well, she used linoleum. <laughs> Um, how the how the artist conveyed the image actually put the image onto um, the, um, the 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 linoleum. It it began to speak to me, and um, I began to see God. The, you know the the hand of God in in the message and and thinking about what the artist must have felt to be able to convey these images. And then those images led me back to uh, see God's hand all over this. And uh, that, that was kind of, that was the process. This, this was, um, this was not a piece that I had ever studied uh, in, in my academic career. Um, but it is something that, that I came across probably browsing through uh, an art book years later. And um, again, the colors, the images, the use of line, all of that uh, appealed to me. Okay. So I want um, to ask this next question. It's a two-parter, okay? And I want both of you to kind of go back and forth on it. Um, I want to start with you, Pastor Domain. Um, so in the sermon series, Dr. A mentioned, um, just like the artist used the material linoleum, right? What's your advice or words on taking control of situations and being innovative with what's being presented before you? I like, uh, I like the word that, that Doc used in that piece, that sermon piece that we showed, creative, right? Because if we look at... Uh, the first piece about the break beat uh, is one thing to have vision, it's one thing to see, but it's a, it's an, a whole uh, another thing, if you will, to be able to take what I see and to be innovative and creative enough to, uh, to, to make it happen, to make it concrete. Uh, and so I would suggest one, linoleum or, or records or, you know, on the block or uh, if it's my 11th grade education or, you know, if it's, it's I just have an, an ability to, uh, to put screws in, a, in the wood in a certain way, take that and be creative with it and do that thing that the way you see it rather than uh, relying on what you've seen all of your life or, or before you. Yeah, uh, I, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Um, you have to to again to me it, it's about creating a space and a place for God to use you mm -hmm. in in conveying the message in in doing what it is that you do yes you you can absolutely be inspired by what you hear by what you see by what others have done but um, when you allow place and space for him to speak to you, you, mm -hmm. you, you'll do it, but you know it will be uniquely yours Definitely. because this is your story. Yes. This is your journey, yeah. um, and he he will he'll give you something different to do, something nobody ever mm -hmm. thought of before. Mm -hmm. You know that's why you know you can't be afraid when everybody doesn't understand. Oh, man. You know yes. what God is saying to you. That that message is for you. It's not for them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think that, that reminds us of all of that. Okay. Dr. A, you also spoke of a smirk on her face, right? You went into this unique moment specifically about the colors being used mm -hmm. and things aren't always black and white. Yeah. Can you touch, can you touch on that? Um, and the, in the painting, it's, it's black and white and then kind of a teal. And, and I think, you know, we really have to appreciate all that God gives us 
the sunshine and the rain. Yes. <laughs> you got to appreciate, you know, peace and also the storms. We got to appreciate the mountaintops and the valleys. They all serve a purpose. And so this stark use of color then became symbolic to me. There's black and white, but then there's teal. You know, there are some things happening uh, in the teal in this particular painting that uh, shows what I see as the hand of God. And I think life is like that. And you got to remember, yeah, there are some things that appear black and white, but God is always moving in the background. He's always mm. orchestrating mm. And, and, and innovating and, and leading and guiding. And, and um, he, he's always working in the background. So even though you may see um, black and white, you got to remember, he, he, he's still there. He's still all around you. He's still in the background. Yeah. For me, this message was a message of inspiration. Um, and I've always been the person that I try to find inspiration out of unique, weird, odd things, right? And I want to know, I'm curious to find out from, from both of you, what do you find inspiration from? How do you get inspiration? Mm -hmm. I find inspiration all around me. Okay. I, rem I remember um, taking the trip to South Africa and looking out the hotel window at Table Mountain mm -hmm. every day. And a friend of mine was joking and, and asked, how many sermons do you have out of this trip? And I said, five. <laughs> and I did. I came yes. back and I preached five <laughs> sermons yes, yes, yes. based on that experience in South Africa. Um, I remember being in Italy one year for um, Palm Sunday and Easter. Right. And I had an encounter with an Italian woman and I do not speak Italian, but you know, the, we, we had an exchange. She, I, I later uh, figured out after I thought about the few you know, words that I picked up while I was there, she was, she was giving me a palm branch and she talked about Padre, Father. I heard Christos, oh, that's Christ. Uh, and kind of put that together and said, this lady is telling me about, you know, mm. Palm Sunday and, <laughs> and, and, and so forth. And I came back and I was inspired by that. You know, the message, message of Christ is the message of Christ if it is presented with a sincere heart and it spreads love. Mm. And we may not speak the same, you know, physical language, but can I tell you, hallelujah is the same in every language. Wow. And so... Um, I came back again, being inspired by that. So it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's life. It's, it's what happens. I, I see God in the children that I serve mm -hmm. every day. Um, speaking up for those who can't speak for themselves. That's part of our mission. Exactly. And so again, just in, in, in what happens every day, in my everyday interactions, that's where I find inspiration. Yeah. 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 I agree wholeheartedly. Uh, I almost see God in, in many different uh, arenas. I might be reading philosophy and God begins to talk, right? Uh, uh, taking a ride, you know, the joke around here is if he takes a ride, just put your seatbelt on when he gets back because he's going to have a hundred ideas. I don't know ideas. who says that one, Pastor. I don't know. I don't know what that one is. Uh, taking a ride. I, I also see God a lot in the pain that I see. Yeah. Uh, and the injustice uh, that I see around us. So there, there are a number. I, I might be listening to a certain song, old, you know, contemporary, and just hear one line or one phrase, and my mind just takes yes. off. Uh, even even in, in the arts, right? I'm looking at this now thinking, man, we could preach about how God speaks in the pain. Right? Just from, so it's, it's a lot of different places. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's check out part three of the series. When God speaks through the arts, we speak through, when God speaks through the dance, part three. 
check it. The word lets us know uh, that David found himself uh, uh, going to get the ark of God, the ark of the covenant. This is not the first time. The first time David went to get the ark of the covenant, they had issues. I'll explain that later. But this time when David went to get the ark, he got it right. And when he got it right, he began to dance before the Lord. Are you still with me? When David danced before the Lord, the whole town got uh, became lit. Everybody was dancing before God, singing before God, celebrating before God. And while he was dancing, his wife, Michal, was looking out of the window. David went home to bless his house. But when he got home, uh, his wife was ready to bless him out. I'll preach that for you another time. Uh, and so Michal uh, went in on David and David said, hold up. Wait a minute, baby. You got it twisted. Uh, I, I was not dancing for you, for the maids or anybody else on them streets. Uh, I was dancing before the Lord because God chose uh, me, David, to dance. Are we still together? David danced. Uh, maybe David was dancing because David began to think about where he was in the beginning. Maybe there was some recollection. Maybe there was some contemplation. Maybe uh, there was some remembrance of uh, where it all started. And so David danced when he thought about how his father and his brothers and not even the prophet Samuel recognized what God was doing in his life. And yet God blessed him anyway. Maybe David thought about how he had to fight a bear and a lion when the elements of the world came against him and tried to take that which God put in his charge. Maybe David was dancing when David remembered that a, all, a whole army of men uh, would not stand up for righteousness against Goliath. And so David had to fight Goliath with a slingshot and some rocks. Maybe David was dancing because he thought about how God anointed him and yet Saul's wrath came against him. But even the king and the king's armies could not stop God's purpose and God's plans for David, David's life. Uh, maybe David was dancing because David thought about that God knew that knew David's past uh, and God knew that David would jack it up in the future and God blessed him anyway. And just like David, uh, it will make you dance. Did you hear me? When you think about where you were, where it all began and how the Lord blessed you anyway, it will make you dance every now and then. It will make you dance when you remember that many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord delivers him out of them all it will make you dance when you know that you've experienced what it's like to be looked over because you didn't fit a certain profile uh, it will make you dance when you remember that sometimes you have had to deal with hamlet slings and arrows of outrageous fortune it will make you dance when you remember that you that you that you have been fighting some things uh, that loom larger than life it will make you dance when you remember that you survived the attacks of people that would of things that would have killed other people it will make you dance when you remember that in spite of all of that God kept delivering you God kept saving you God kept blessing you God kept lifting you David said, baby, I wasn't dancing for you. I was dancing because the Lord chose me. And perhaps there's somebody right now, right where you are, you remember what God has done for you and how God chose you in the midst of it all, and you're ready to dance. Hold it one second. Let's go a little further. David said that the Lord chose him. See, this dancing king recognized that God had faith in him even when others couldn't see it. God uh, had faith in him when life had pushed him to the extreme. God had faith in him even when his life was hanging in the balance uh, and it could have gone the wrong way. David said, God chose me. When God allowed David to bring the ark home, David got it right. In fact, it was so right that he broke out in a praise dance in the middle of the parade. Don't get it twisted and don't chill out too much because this was no groove. This was, this was nobody's kickback. Nah, the turn up was real on the road back to Jerusalem. 
In fact, the situation was so lit that King David's dancing hit the whole town. and Everybody started celebrating. And while David danced, God speaks to us. Can I tell you what the Lord said? Are you ready? Write these down. God speaks to us in the dance through David's dance and says to us that God, that the Lord is a God of another chance. Did you get that? The Lord is a God of another chance. All right. So, Pastor, can you go into detail of the significance of the Ark of the Covenant in this scripture? The Ark of the Covenant in the mind of the people who lived in antiquity, particularly uh, people who were descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, uh, the Ark of the Covenant represented the presence of God. Uh, the background to this story, I'm sure uh, many of you are going to remember, is that I forget the gentleman's name, but the Ark was at this gentleman's house, and everything that God touched, he was blessed. I mean, his whole house was blessed, his descendants, his lineage, his, everybody was blessed. And so David realized, man, we have to get the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem so we can have the presence of God so that we can be blessed the way that man's family was blessed. And so that's the significance. Okay. Um, and there was one particular part that really stood out to me. Um, it was a specific moment uh, when you were going over why we dance or why he was dancing, right? Mm -hmm. um, why we dance in victorious situations. Um, but at the very end, um, you mentioned that David said he wasn't dancing for anyone, but that he was dancing because he was chosen in the midst of it all. Yes. Can you go into that? Sure. Uh, again, uh, the story is he's dancing. Um, and he, not only does he dance, right, but he stops and he's blessing the people with, with very real material uh, materials to meet their needs, food uh, and, and water, and there's a big feast happening, wine. And he goes home and he's ready to bless his house and, and, and ready to celebrate with his household. Imagine that, right? That, that you're doing ministry and your ministry is popping. And you go home and what you call a home is really a hell hole because you can't get along in your house. That's what's happening in this text, right? He gets home. And his, and his wife, wife is just going boy. off. My, how the king danced before the maids, you know, making a fool of himself and so forth. And so that's when he has to let her know, listen, uh, I don't know what you're thinking, but baby, I was not dancing for you. I started thinking about the goodness of the Lord in my life and I couldn't help myself. That's right. That's right. Hey, when he mentioned, when Pastor mentioned how now is the time to take the limits off, right um take the limits off and go after our divine purpose um how did you feel in that moment when you heard that or um uh, in touch on it um uh, why is why is now the time to take those limits off um, we have been placed in a a space and a time i think where we clearly should see the hand of god mm. we have been forced to come together in ways as family, uh, to reconcile relationships. You, you can't be uh, with someone from, from March to November and only dependent on each other and not reconcile. Uh, this is a time for reconciliation and, and understanding and, and God has, has uh, forged such a time as this for us to, to do those things. Um, it's the urgency of now. Um, everything, is, I remember saying this even at the beginning or especially at the beginning of the pandemic when we were in phase one, you have nothing else to do but to, to uh, use this time well. Um, a lot of us got busy cleaning out closets that we hadn't thought about and, and uh, cleaning out uh, dressers and and so forth and um, doing those things, cleaning up. Well, you need to clean up spiritually too. Yes. And, yes. and clean up emotionally. Uh, now is the time. Um, we don't know when we will have this opportunity again. 
God has, has blessed us. He's, he's blessed us in many ways. He's blessed us through science mm -hmm. and science is working. And, and so we know that um, with God's inspiration and working through the people that he has blessed to have the knowledge of science and the love for science to do this work, that um, he, he's, he, he is moving, he is healing, he will deliver. We, we don't know when we will have this time forced upon us again. After this point, we're going to have to make it, create it, really prioritize it for ourselves. But right now, um, we, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't waste what we have. Definitely. So this is the time. What else are you going to do better? <laughs> this, this is the time uh, to do that. Pat, you want to add anything? No, man, I'm, I'm with her, right? It seems like we're limited, but in fact, you know, God is kind of taking the reins off of, off of us so that we can uh, do some of the things that we said we couldn't do, wouldn't do, or never thought possible. Well, this is your time. It's opportunity. It's opportunity. Yeah. So you also mentioned that we serve a God of a second chance, right? Um, and that can mean so many things, right? Um, so if now is the time, right, for that person that this is their second, third chance, right? What would you say to that person as encouragement? I would, I would say it's not about a second chance. Hmm. I would phrase it another chance. Another chance. Because, man, if I look at myself, I have messed up and messed it up so many times. But because of his grace, right, and because he is sovereign, he controls it all, God is always saying, come on, we're going to get it right this time. You know, he'll let, he'll let us sulk. He will even let us deal with the consequences of our decisions and then come back and say, okay, let's get it right this time. So keep pushing, right? Keep pressing. I think the, the common phrase now is keep the pressure on. Keep the pressure on and keep pushing. Definitely, definitely. Um, I love this conversation. I think we should definitely do this again. Y'all let us know in the comment section if y'all enjoyed this. If there's any other series that you want us to tackle, we yeah. would love to have this conversation again. So y'all let us know in the comment section uh, what series you want us to tackle and dig deeper into, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, Pastor Dr. A, any last words, any words of encouragement, motivation? Well, I encourage us to use this time uh, to be closer to one another. Um, use this time to be the church, even though we're not coming to church Understand that we are still the temple of mm. the Holy Spirit. Yes. And so we should still be uh, out there doing and saying those things that God um, has, has put to our hand to do. Um, we may not be able to, to gather together as we have in, in, in days of old, but we can still serve one another and love one another as we've been ordained to do. So I just encourage anybody, uh, everybody to do that. And uh, I, I have a special plea, if you'll uh, let me <laughs> do this. Um, I've been thinking this, this week about uh, those of us who have, um, if we have not experienced it firsthand, we certainly know someone, I mean, not even six degrees of separation from someone who has experienced uh, death and grieving during this season. And so my challenge, and, and this was actually my, my birthday wish, this, this is my last ask for uh, my birthday. I want you to minister to someone who mourns. Take the time to minister to someone who mourns and uh, you know everything is okay in the moment you know we 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 deal in the moment when 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 the people are there and the calls come but we all know that the calls stop and you have those those moments of loneliness um, when the grief sets in and so I'm, I'm going to ask you to put some feet on your prayers and um, Minister to those who mourn, whether it is 
I'm just calling to see if you need something from the grocery store. I can have it delivered for you. Mm. Mm. Or, or, you know, can I, can I do something for you? Just reach out to somebody who, uh, who is in mourning this week and let them know that you haven't forgotten about them and you won't and that they are still surrounded by God's love. So I encourage us to be the church um, even though we can't be at church. Mm. I love that. If you accept that challenge, go ahead in the comment section right now, drop I'm in. I'm Let's in, fill the, the comment box up with I'm in. If you yes. accept that challenge to reach out and minister, minister to someone. Pastor, you going to drop us with a little word before we leave? Oh, of course. Oh. I can't let our people say they've been to church and did not get a word, a sermon. So give me three and I'll be out. Check it. In Lamentations chapter three, verse 40, it reads, let us Search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. I'll read it for you again in case you missed that. Are you still trying to get your holy scriptures together? Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. That's Lamentations chapter 3 uh, verse 40. Certainly we are in a period of reflection. That's what this Sunday was about as we look back over a certain series and talked about our our process and our prayer time. This is a moment, right? Because we know that God will move us sooner than later. This is the time that we should reflect upon not only where we have been, but how we have gotten here. That's what this idea of reflection is about. It really says, allow yourself to trace back, allow your mind to bend back. I would suggest to even go to, go to the crevices and the corners, the deepest recesses of your mind. Check out the decisions that that you have made. Check out uh, why you decided that you were going here and not there or that you were going to be still. Once we have checked ourselves, once we've done some self-reflection, then here it is. First of all, we've got to we've got to allow ourselves uh, to be truthful with ourselves. Right. Once I discover where I've been, what I've done, the good decisions, the bad decisions. Once I've discovered that I was a blessing here. But at this point, I needed a blessing from somebody else. And at this point, I was really not worthy of the Lord's blessing. But his grace kicked in in my life. Let your feet, let your uh, metaphorical feet go through your mind, go through every corner and discover how I got here. And then when you discover how you how you reach the place where you are or where you were and how God delivered you, then take the time to be honest with yourself. Once you are honest with yourself, give allow yourself to walk in reality. Then the next thing is you already know it. Make the necessary adjustments. Don't keep going the way you're going. If your way is not congruent and in harmony with the way that God is moving. I love the way we say it today. Allow yourself to imagine what God imagines for you and then stretch for that. That's your word in less than three minutes. Lamentations chapter three, Amen. verse four. Examine ourselves. Do some reflection and let God move you to the next phase yes. of your life. The governor does, is not the only one who has the power of phases. It is God's idea to move us from phase to phase to phase where the pandemic can't touch, where the pandemic can't control. God bless you and God keep you. Doc is gonna give the invitation and we out. Well, we, if you have been touched by uh, the, the sermon series, by, by what you have heard today, we invite you to join with us and to join us on the journey uh, to discipleship. If you want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your savior, reach out to us. What must I do to be saved? The Bible says, believe yes. on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shall be saved. That's all that it takes. If that is uh, not your testimony, perhaps your testimony is, I was baptized as a child. Mm -hmm. I grew I grew up coming to that church and and something happened. I got off track. Life happened. Well, I want you to know that we serve a God who is waiting with open arms for you to return. He does not want you to take this journey of life alone. Come back to him. He's waiting for you. And then if you are seeking a church home, we invite you to worship with us, to learn with us, to pray with us, to have sisters and brothers 
who are, are fellowshipping and who will pray with you and support you on this journey, reach out to us. Follow the prompts on the screen uh, to have someone pray with you right now. Whatever your need may be, mm -hmm. we are praying for you now. We pray that you have been blessed. And Pastor, if you will close us out in prayer and- Definitely, uh, we'll definitely. Beforehand, shout out to our technology ministry, yes, our worship and arts ministry, yes. to our disciples who are doing the work of ministry in the midst of a pandemic. And to all of you, our brothers and sisters who have been with us or who just joined us, we yeah. love all of you and please know that you are always in our prayer. Our prayer for you today is that God will bless you and keep you, yes. that God will lead you and guide you, that God will lift you yes. and let you see prosperity. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.